So um, forced ferment on beer is really going to give you an idea of how much, what the best case scenario attenuation is. Do you guys know what attenuation is? Attenuation is how much sugar the yeast can eat. So if you're at 1060 original gravity, do you guys know what original gravity is? And uh, don't be, a, I mean, everybody's starting. I've got no idea. Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, original gravity or density uh, is a way to measure the amount of sugars in solution. And so if you take that measurement at the beginning, um, you take that measurement at the beginning and then you take that measurement at the end and minus those first two, mon two numbers, it's gonna give you how much alcohol is in your beer or your wine. Um, so density or gravity, measuring density or measuring gravity is a way to figure out potential alcohol content and then alcohol content at the end. And with the beer, uh, you know, you probably want to finish, depending on the style, anywhere from 10.15 to 10.02. Um, you know, maybe 10.30 if it's a really, really big beer. Uh, but if you're, if you're not, if you're worried about how far you can bring, how much sugar your yeast can eat, um, with beer, if you mash in at a very high temperature above 160 degrees, uh, mash in is the temperature you hold the grain at, uh, which will allow the sugars to come out of solution or when, into solution. When you call it a big beer, do you mean one with a lot of ingredients? No, a lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. Um, so a big beer would be like seven and seven percent alcohol in it. Okay. Um, like surly darkness up here, three Floyd's dark lord. Uh, those are like fourteen or fifteen percent. Um, you know, for a wine that's pretty big. Um, okay. But for a uh, uh, for a beer that's huge, like fifteen percent beer. Knock your socks off after a couple. Of Is that what doppel box? Dop uh, doppel box are usually a little smaller. I could pull it up my BJCP app, but uh, anybody doppel box? Grab me. Triples are usually eight percent above. Doubles are six to eight percent. Um, uh, quadruples are like twelve. So the force for men, you guys are probably pouring yeast out if you brew it. You know you can have your yeast cake. Um, you can just leave a little beer on that yeast cake, swirl it up, put it in a mason jar in your fridge. That's gonna last for two weeks. And then the next time you brew, you can pull off you know, a half a liter of beer or wort and put a you know, cup of yeast into it. And so you're throwing a huge amount of yeast for the volume of fermentables. And that's going to, uh, within probably two days, that's gonna finish out and leave it on your counter, you know, 70 degrees or warmer. That's gonna let you know the maximum attenuation of the beer. So how, how much sugar the yeast can eat in that beer. Um, if you mash in really, if you mash in hotter, I wanna talk about mashing in, that's um, putting sugar uh, in your grains um, to release the sugar, putting water into your grains to release sugar. Putting sugar into your grains. Sounded good. <laughs> Um, so uh, that's going to let you know, like if you finish and then throughout your fermentation, uh, your normal fermentation is going to take longer. That's going to let you know that if it stalls out uh, before what your force ferment was at, that you can fix it on the yeast side of things. You know, if your force ferment only goes down to 1040, um, no matter how much yeast you throw into that, it's just going to... Um, it's going to stop at 1040 unless you use an enzyme, and then it's going to go all the way down. Enzymes will break up long chain sugars into short chain sugars, which are easier for yeast to eat. Can you give autolysis or autolysis? Uh, autolysis, you can. Honestly, in the lab, uh, the two head lab techs argue about that. One guy leaves his beer on the yeast, and one guy takes it off immediately. Um, I do it depending on style. If I do a sour beer or anything with Phantomyces, I leave everything there because as the yeast break down and die, autolysis is the process of yeast death. Um, uh, as they break down and die, there's nutrients that are released and the Britannomyces can eat that and keep going. And once Britannomyces gets up to a certain point, some Britannomyces will die and then the Britannomyces eat them and then they keep spreading. That's why in the wine industry, um, people really hate Britannomyces because one cell can just ruin a complete batch of wine. It'll 
Is that the burnt rubber smell? Um, it really depends. On what did that cause from? Uh, Britannomyces, it's a strain of yeast that produces acid instead of alcohol. Um, and so sour beers, you want that. You want the acidity to it and tartness. Um, but in wine, you usually don't. That's not the way you want beer acidity to have. Uh, in standard beers, you don't want Britannomyces. In other words, there's not that big a fear about over pitching. pitching um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I mean, if you over pitch, you pitch onto a cake, a yeast, um, you're going to speed up your fermentation profile, and a lot of your uh, flavor compounds are produced at the end of fermentation. And so if you take it from a four day ferment to a two day ferment, the flavor profile of your beer is probably going to change. Also, if you harvest and reuse yeast on a commercial scale, uh, they're not going to divide as often. So as you keep using and keep over pitching, you're going to get an older culture. Um, and your fermentations are going to start to get sluggish and some off flavors will pull in before if you pitch correctly. And under pitching is going to stress your yeast out and lead to off flavors. It's a really good idea just to understand what you're pitching. That's why we put so much effort. We have monkeys dedicated to lab counting, or cell counting and concentration and dilution. They don't like that job. Um, <laughs> uh, we think it's really important. That's why we, when we say 100 billion cells on the package for beer, we have 100 billion cells on the package. Um, so we tell you what, you what you start with, so you can figure it out by starters or by pitch rate or whatever you want to do. Um, under pitching and over pitching are usually not good things. Um, Exception to that is German wheat beers. If you like the banana flavor from German wheat beers, you need to under pitch to get that ester. And if you like the clove flavor, you over pitch.